So the key question is, what is it that I have on the wrist today? Is it an AP? Is it a Rolex? Or is it another blue dial overseas Vacheron? Man, I gotta tell you, this is the dial color that got me hooked into the brand. I don't even, I'm sorry guys, I know I talked a lot about Vacheron, but it seems like there's gonna be a lot of Vacheron videos coming your way. Vacheron, if you're listening, I'm like the proper ambassador on YouTube that's to do with Vacheron. You know, this is 41 case, we don't mess about with 37s, that's not us. So this is the same exact Vacheron 4500 overseas that I talked about previously in rose gold, except of course that this is in stainless steel. So this is a little bit more every day, I guess, and that's, I don't know if that justifies another one in a different case material. And for that reason, I'm not gonna go through the specs because it's just pointless. But what I do wanna talk to you guys about is how did I get this watch? Because I didn't get this watch in retail. I tried, I went up to Vacheron and I said, hey, it's your boy Ritter. I've done a lot of videos for Vacheron and I also acquired the 4500 V in rose gold. You guys wanna hook me up with one? And the answer was, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll think about it, you know? But the, the time, give it time, give it a long time maybe, I don't know. And I just didn't wanna wait, right? So I made peace with the fact that I'm not gonna get this at retail, that I need to go aftermarket, go gray to get this watch. And I did, but what I didn't account for are the charges, right? So there were additional charges. And in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys about these charges, right? Just so you, just so you'd know. Let's get into it. What is up guys, it is your boy Ritter from Watch Society. So I made peace with the fact, as I said, that I'm going to go gray to pick up this overseas, right? So I um, tried to explore the local market here, right? So the aftermarket dealers and what's not, and nobody had any Vacherons overseas. It's just out, you can't get it. And uh, someone heard about my interest and reached out to me and said, you know what, I've got this black dial for you. We can give it to you if you want to. I said, fine. Absolutely, fantastic, no problem at all. So I met the guy, checked the watch, it looked clean, I paid him and I took the watch and I was happy, right? Two weeks later, I find out that this watch was actually polished, right? So, I mean, why didn't you tell me it was polished, man? Like you could have just mentioned that in the beginning. So I call him back again and I say, listen, man, this watch is polished. He told me it was not polished. It was brand new condition, etc. It's clean, but it was polished. And you forgot to mention that. He said, you know what? No harm done. This is your money back. I'll take the watch and we're okay like that. And that, that was absolutely fine. So then I decided to explore this professionally, right? So I said, let me reach out to the most reputable aftermarket dealer internationally, right? I, I can't mention who exactly. I reach out to this person and I say, do you guys have an overseas 4500 blue dial and stainless steel unworn? He said, you know what? It's funny that you asked that. We've just got one in today and the cost is $45,000. Are you interested? I said, absolutely, that's fine. When do you want it, Rida? I want it right now. What he had forgot to mention is that when you demand this now, like express shipment, there's gonna be charges. I'm not talking about your shipping charges only, but additional charges like a lot of other charges, things that's to do with duties, local tax, international tax in the US. There's a lot of tax involved. There's tax on everything. I think I was even taxed on the plastic that the watch was wrapped on. Everything was taxed. And if you guys have been watching the channel, you'll come to know that I've actually only had two experiences or rather one experience before this with the aftermarket, right? Because the first time I bought, it was through an end user. These were his watches and I looked at them, I liked them, I paid a premium, the premium wasn't bad, it was about $46,000. If you combine both of these watches together and look at their market price today, you'll find out that the Daytona alone goes for $40,000, right? So the, the deal was a steal, right? And it, there was no shipment involved, I, I, I met the guy and he showed me the watches, I paid them, took the watches and left. And that was about it. So I really don't have any experience buying directly from the aftermarket, right? Especially if this is an international order. And the least that they could have done is just basically educate me on this point, right? So outside of the shipping fees, you will have to pay local and international tax and other duties that they do this on day-to-day -day basis, they, they, they would know, so. Yeah, that would have saved me a lot of money. So here's how much I actually paid. 1500 for duties, about $3,000 for taxes. I don't know which taxes exactly in the US or somewhere 
in the middle between the UAE and the US. I'm not really sure what taxes are those. I'm not sure how taxes apply on a pre-owned item. I mean, I don't know if that's the thing in the US, but yeah. I paid $3,000 for taxes. And then there was $800 for FedEx shipping fees, $600 for clearance, and $2,200, which is 5% local tax in the UAE that was calculated on the full value of the watch. That's the $45,000 value we talked about, right? So the total dollar amount that I paid is $8,150. This overseas basically cost me $53,150 which is about 195,000 dirhams. I mean, I'm still smiling, no regrets at all. Um, what I'm saying here is just account for these charges. If you know, you know, if you don't know, this is me telling you that if you order something of a significant value, whether it be jewelry or a watch or anything really that is just super expensive, um, account for 15 to 20% of that, depending on where you are in the world, that you would top off for payment. In my case, I pay 20%. That's what happened. Had I known about these charges beforehand, maybe I would have reconsidered or maybe not. Maybe I would have still gone ahead with the deal, but at least I'm going into it knowing what I'm going to pay in full. So I would have just appreciated the fact to learn about these prices before actually getting into it. But as I said, there is no harm done. I'm still happy. This is still a fantastic watch. I just wanted you to be aware of what you could encounter in terms of taxes, duties, shipping fees, etc. The reference for this watch is the 4500V slash 1108-B128. That is the reference for the stainless steel one. And as you guys know very well, of course, Vacheron was and still is at the pinnacle of watchmaking and for decades as well. I mean, they're known for complicated bespoke watches, but they also make some really great steel watches like this 4500V or even the 56 in stainless steel braces, something I'm looking to explore hopefully in the future. But anyways, this Vacheron is the Gen 3. It includes 1mm reduction in the case width and carries the caliber 5100. You get 60 hour power reserve and 150 water meter resistance. Now the other thing that I really enjoy about the overseas is the strap interchangeability system, right? So I've recently topped up the white strap. This is actually a strap that I've ordered a few months back way, way before I got this watch. And I think it looks great on a white strap. I originally ordered ordered it for the rose gold, but I think it looks better on the stainless steel or even the orange 100 piece limited if you can find someone who's willing to sell it because they only made 100 pieces of that. Now the gold 4500V Vacheron overseas is a great watch. It is the best overseas, basic overseas that you can actually get as I said in my last video, but it's definitely not an everyday watch. The stainless steel on the other hand is. And honestly speaking, to come think about it, I think I should have gone with a different model altogether considering that I own the rose gold 4500V. Something maybe in the classic line like the traditional in rose gold or white gold or even the new open work traditional, which I think is absolutely fire. So the other thing that I wanna share with you guys actually is that I don't live off YouTube like it's not how I make money my voice is your voice and I want to make sure it stays that way I barely take any sponsorship I've turned down a lot of sponsorships and the reason why I did that is because I want it to be as genuine as honest as possible the learnings you encounter buying from retail or buying from the aftermarket the, the mistakes that you guys make is exactly what I go through so in that respect, I'm very interested to hear your thoughts about what I said here. If you think it was an impulsive move to go gray and pay, I don't know if it was double retail or a little bit more considering the duties, the tax, the fees, the stuff that we talked about, or maybe you had a similar experience. Let me know in the comments section down below. I would love to go through it. So that is it for this video. That's enough me moaning about my experience buying from the aftermarket and what additional charges I've encountered. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.